Hey, welcome back to the Cash Money's channel. Uh, I'm just gonna give you my take on account size and position sizes in your indexes, um, whether it's your retirement or your taxable brokerage account. I would just keep on piling money inside your index until you reach about maybe 100,000 to 200,000 in that index. Uh, and once you reach that, you could switch to other indexes. Um, I would recommend two to three different types of indexes for retirement or your taxable brokerage account. The reason why is because you wanna you want that uh, high that hundred thousand two hundred thousand dollars in your indexes because you get quarterly dividends and if you have that much money in inside that index you'll get a quarterly dividends of between maybe depending on the index probably roughly between a thousand to two thousand dollars quarterly. On top of that, that doesn't include the growth of the of the price in the index. So you'll get the growth in the price and then you also get your dividends. And what I usually see is um, most of my friends and family, when they tell me they, that they need help, mostly they have um, some of their, mo a large position in, in bonds or slow growing indexes, indexes with high, higher fees. So what I usually do is I just tell them, you know, I think you should probably move your money into, into that index has higher growth and also it has um, you know it's not for your age group if you're younger if you're not 10 years out to retirement then I would recommend a higher growth uh, index because you know you have all that time for it to grow and once they did that you know most of them were happy um, that you know they saw better gains than before because I think before that maybe some of them were only seeing one or two percent uh, gains a year, which is you know really low, when they could get you know the average at least of you know eight to ten percent a year. Usually their employers' accounts are limited into what what they can invest in. So I want to make sure you're choosing the the best the best um, uh, funds within your portfolio for the highest growth. You know it's not bad going into bonds if you're going to do like some sort of allocation strategy during the down markets. So what I did this year in 2020 was I did, you know, I had I had 90% in indexes, 10% in some bonds. Uh, but then when the, there was a down market, uh, the bonds increased. So then I sold my bonds for a premium at, you know, since it, it grew quite well during the down market. And then I used that money to buy the discounted prices of the indexes that were down during that market. And so when it rebounded, then I got the best of both both worlds. You know, you get the increase in the bond price, and then you get you you buy the discounted prices of the index. And then when the market rebounds, then you're also benefiting off of those off of that gain as well. You could always use use that strategy. Some people use like an eighty twenty um, indexes versus bond indexes, or you know indexes versus bonds. And then when there's a down market, they take that twenty percent. Um, sell it out of premiums and the bonds usually go up during that down market and then they invest it into the discounted prices of those indexes um, so that's a strategy that's out there that people utilize um, for you know uh, to grow their portfolio even even larger people also front load their front load their index which they increase the amount percentage per year that they that they um, put into their 401k in the beginning of the year that way, the more money they have in the beginning of the year, then it could, has longer time for growth uh, towards the end of the year. So people usually see higher returns during if they do that. Um, that's also another strategy. And then, um, and for single stocks, I mean, if you're if you're swing trading single stocks, um, to make to make cash in the market, you could start with any um, any amount. I mean, I have. What, one of my challenges I'm trying to do for myself is I got 50 50 dollars or 50 dollars in in at my TD Ameritrade account. I'm just trying to get that to 100 dollars, you know, based off of I'm limited by the by the amount of shares I could buy and also you know the stock price of that of 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 the of different companies. And so that's just a challenge for me that I enjoy doing. I'm just like, can I get 50 dollars to 100 dollars, you know? And so right now I'm at I turned 50 dollars. Now it's at about maybe 60. 62 to 65 dollars right now so you know i've already increased it by you know a good 15 20 percent already also i also have a, a larger amount I, I i do trades with as well uh, but you know um, i have a sister and she started with a thousand dollars and then you know now she's just within a matter of a, maybe a month or two she's at 
$1,250, I think it was. And so, you know, doing short-term trades, you know, can get you a good, good gain. You know, $250 might not seem a lot to one person, but to other people, you know, that's, you know, a couple good dinners. I mean, it pays a couple bills maybe. So, you know, you can start with any, any cash amount for single stock swing trading. And then for position sizes, you know, I would probably start low, you know, um, until you see consistent gains before you invest more, you know, like start off with a thousand dollars or you could even do 50 or lower, whatever, until you see, start seeing gains, a consistent gains in what you're doing and you're more, you know, confident in your strategy. And then I would move up to maybe doing $5,000 positions and you can move up, you can scale that up to 10,000, $20,000 positions, you know, and so on, you know, limited by how much your income and also, you know, how much gains you get in the market as well. And you could just reinvest those gains too, or you could take them out at the end of the month. I mean, I do both, you know, at the end of the month, I see, you know, how much money I've made and then I take a small percentage out, pay some bills, whatnot. Or, you know, I, most of the time I just reinvest it into the market, do a, a daily compounding effect or you just put, put, put that, put those gains to work for you, you know, the, you know, higher your accounts balance will be towards the end of the year. So that's my goal anyways. And my, my goal is to get maybe about do $130,000 per year just by swing trading. But realistically, I'm looking at maybe I could probably do fifty dollars to $60,000 swing trading. So, I mean, it's just up to you and your goals and, um, and your time commitment too. Because usually I, it takes about maybe one to two hours every, every trading day for me to invest and, and look at charts. Um, so I just spend my time looking at charts and looking for the, you know, the good deals. And the higher your position size, when you're swing trading, um, you could take less risk by, because you're, because if you have like a $20,000 position in a stock that you're swing trading, um, you, you don't have to wait, you know, to get the 10 full 10%. If you go in, if the stock drops 10% and you get in, you don't have to wait the full 10% when it recovers, um, to get out. I mean, you could get out at 2% and you know, you'll get $400. You get out at 4%, that's $800. You know, you don't have to wait for the whole full 10% to get $2,000 and get out um, based off of that trade. I mean, I what I usually recommend is, you know, you know, don't get greedy. Once you, you know, hit make a make your goal ahead of time, you know, once it hits like 7%, you know, gain, I'm out or 8% gain, I'm out, you know, it's just up to you. But if you're working with a higher position size, maybe maybe your your percentage gain is a lot lower, uh, maybe 2% or 3%. I mean, that's very common among traders that trade higher position sizes like that. Because, you know, if they could do that consistently every day, 2%, 2%, 2%, you know, the market swings back and forth from 2% all the time. Um, compound those gains every day for a full month, you know, um, and just make maybe like 10,000 just by getting off to two, two or four percent gains out of the market every day, and so that's just my take on uh, position sizes and account sizes. I mean, just works work with what's best for you, and you could it doesn't matter if if you don't have a lot of money, you can still make cash in the market. I mean, so you know, let's go out there and make some cash. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thank you for all my subscribers. You have a great day.